Right, and action. What did you say to me when we just walked in? What did you point at? I said, this is where the wall is that we talked about. Yeah, point to it. Wall. Pardon? Point to it for the viewers. There point it down. is. What did you actually say to me when we walked in though? You said... I don't remember what I said. I'll tell you, you said, I invented that. Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Yes, I guess I did. <laughs> I think you did as well. I'm going to ask you a bit about the fact that you spent 40 years not doing your true calling to be a sculptor, mm. right? And because you told me that at some point you left an institution and you were advised. And it was the teacher who discovered me. Was she the one that you were going to show me that picture that she praised when you were 12, 13? Yes. That's it's, the it's same the, teacher. It's a simple line drawing. And that's what's, that, that was the first couple of weeks I was there. The idea was, she said, I'm going to pose, doesn't matter who pose, I'm going to pose in a gesture and in a few, sh in a couple of short lines, capture my, my pose. Mm -hmm. And apparently I was head and shoulders because she even marked it. He's actually the one, she, she must have followed me through the whole years because she ended up being my sculpture instructor in my, in my senior year. This is now, uh, toward the end of World War II. What are you gonna do after you graduate? I said, I wanna be a sculpt, I wanna sculpt. And she said very kindly, you know, we just went through a depression and the, the poorest people, or worse to that effect, were artists. She said, I suggest maybe they do something like industrial design. And that's what I ended up doing. One, one episode in my career for Revlon, when a design I dreamt up, I dreamt up because it was, it was obvious to me what had to be done. This was 1970. The things that the industry didn't have at the time was uh, giving the public any idea of how many colors, what their merchandise consisted of self-selection they already do self-selection in supermarkets in clothing stores if women had a chance to try on colors it would be a playground they would love it they would buy it night and day that was my philosophy so i developed and kept developing and, and i made bigger and bigger sketches and one day uh, a buyer a woman buyer came in and she was in some vice president's office and she saw one of my sketches and said, I want that in my one of my stores. And, and what were you sketching? A... I was sketching the idea, it turned out to be uh, a tower of uh, eyeshadow, a tower of nail enamel, a tower of lipstick. And with the tower, there would be a console with a mirror of of testing. Are you saying that you invented the idea of the tester oh, playing? The I made a big yeah. thing out of it. Maybe, maybe I did. It was for department stores. Yeah. Um, because I thought in terms of elegance, even though I'm now taking the product out from under the showcase and putting it on the floor so you can choose whatever you want. Uh, at any rate, uh, it got built and put into a major department store yeah. in Champaign, Illinois, which is an enormous university town. The towers, I had towers standing around in a circle. Yeah. The towers, the products flew so fast they couldn't keep up with it. They couldn't believe sales went up 60% and it was a raging success. After that, at the, at the end of the year, there was a, um, a stockholders meeting and the CEO had, them, had me put up the tower and he said, this is our new posture and this is what happened, how wonderful it is. At that time, I tried out something that was used in other products, 
uh, gravity feed. So you propose the idea of the thing where you go in and you pull out a lipstick and another one drops down. Right. Uh, and then they spent, they ordered five million dollars worth of these towers. They started going up all over the country. It, it became the posture of, of popular brand cosmetics going against the wall, which they are today. The final sketch was um, I had I had a tower of product, and instead of five towers of, di of the product, I had a, one tower of product with Revlon. And then I drew other sections just with hanging cards, just to, just to give an impression. And on top, it didn't say Revlon, it said cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And they said, this is, this is it, this sells product. And we're now going to put it, we're going to get, get out of the princess department stores. Why did they get out of the department stores? Where did they go? They went to that wall in, in drugstores. It wasn't just Revlon yeah. that, that quit department stores. Yeah. It changed the entire position of an entire industry. It was making it more popular and more accessible. More accessible. To the modern woman. Indeed, you're a, you're a revolution, one man revolution, <laughs> and those of us that wear cheaper <laughs> cosmetics <laughs> are, are, are forever grateful to you. <laughs>